I want to control my High Wonder XARM 1S through my Raspberry Pi Pico from the ROS2 command line. I'm going to do that at joint level for now anyway, but I want to instruct all six joints in the same message. So I've chosen to use the ROS2's joint jog control message. Let me show you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. This is my fourth robot using Micro ROS and ROS2 with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm treating, treading a little on new territory though, as using a new command message to me, joint jog. This means I can set all of these servo angles in one go from the command line. If you'd like this video and it helps you learning or your projects, why not buy me a virtual coffee or lunch or a holiday for two? Uh, use the super thanks button below the video. Please do hit that like button too on the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. So I bought a XARM 1S from High Wonder, and my plan is to actually connect that through a Raspberry Pi Pico into the ROS2 ecosystem. I've already done a video on the joint position on this, understanding where all those joints are so that we can actually sync up the real world with our model in ROS2. Now the robot is actually being controlled via UART messages coming out of UART1 from our Pico. I've got some telemetry also giving me what's going on, which I can see on UART0. And USB is running the micro ROS protocol connecting over to a Raspberry Pi 4. Check out my playlist on micro ROS if you want to see some more videos about micro ROS and how to use that in connecting to ROS2. I could not produce these videos without help from my sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. I first came across Wolf SSL when I was working on an IoT project and trying to secure MQTT. I needed a library to help add TLS to my communication. Wolf SSL has a great library for just that, under either open source or commercial license, with support too. I've been using it on Pico and Pico W projects ever since. Wolf SSL have other great products too, including a crypto library, a secure boot process to validate firmware, SSH clients, and TPM20, a trusted platform module library. Whether you're a hobbyist or are building commercial embedded systems, Wolf SSL's products are fabulous accelerators. Having them as a sponsor, I am sure I'm going to showcase some of their products over the coming months. So please do check out Wolf SSL. All the code for controlling these joints is included in my project on GitHub on John Durrant RPI Pico Exarm. Now the code for actually controlling these servos, um, I've adapted from some work by Chris Corson over on his Exarm servo control project. He did this for the Arduino and I've ported this across. Um, still probably need to do a little bit more porting, but I've ported the code across to run on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Previously, I've controlled servos and controlled motors using twist messages, using pose messages, but those aren't really suitable for controlling all of the joints in one go. So I was looking through the standard set of control messages and I came across joint jog, which I think is the right way to go. So joint jog allows us to actually have the list of joints that we want to change and their displacements, i.e. the angle we want to set them to. It would allow velocity as well, but I'm not going to use it, and the duration, how long we want it to take to move them. So our joint names are going to be uh, all of the names of the uh, joints on this robot, which are arm one to arm six. The angles then will be in radians. We won't use velocity and the duration will be in seconds. So I'm sticking to SI units to define all this and to use all this. Let's have a quick look at the code of how I can set up a joint jog message and how I can subscribe and receive that message. Over in the code on the repo, I'm going to have to set up this joint jog message so that I can actually then receive it. So I'm doing a bit of a structure setup here. 
and I'm setting up enough space for six items uh, within our, our uh, sequence of names and displacements. I had a bit of a problem uh, when I originally did this because I didn't think I'd actually need to initialize the strings for the actual names, but I actually do need to put a value in there. Otherwise I don't actually get anything back. So uh, that was uh, an interesting learning as I went through this one. I'm going to create a new entity that is going to subscribe to our joint uh, jog message uh, on the channel joint jog. And that's uh, going to take that joint jog message we've just seen it set up. And that means I need an executor to actually uh, process that as well. So I've set one of those up. So each time we get a joint jog message, and I'm just going to check its context is correct so that it is a joint just, uh, jog message I'm processing, I'm basically going to um, lock off the uh, access to my XARM just to make sure that we don't try and then read the messages from the servos at the same time and read their states at the same time. Um, that will cause problems. So um, I've, I've actually had to put some semaphore control in here. But basically, I'm just going through each of the uh, joints in the arms and then uh, instructing the robot to move uh, with the set rad uh, pause pos uh, position command there. So I'm telling it a servo and give it the angle to move to and giving it a duration now in milliseconds rather than converting my seconds to milliseconds. I did have a, a few missed approaches with this. I was looking at whether I should be putting these in a queue when I was getting them back or whether I should be running things differently. I didn't find the queue mechanism was going to work very well for me. So um, I moved to this semaphore strategy of locking out and taking control and moving the servos instantly I get this message through. To test this out, I'm going to send the message actually from the command line from the ROS2 topics pub command. And I can do that using this command here. I've got the minus one in there because I'm just going to send one copy of it. And uh, I'm, it's a joint jog message, obviously, and it's on the topic joint jog. And then we put the list of joint names and then this list of displacements and finally a duration of seconds. And that works really nicely. Now using that uh, command line in a bit of a script, I can actually get my arm to go through a nice set of motions and show that I've actually I've got complete control of it. We can turn left, right, we can go forward, we can uh, manipulate the uh, grabber, etc. So um, nicely controlled all from the commands, but it is all at joint level. Now I'm lucky enough to have a second one of these X-arms. Well, part of an X-arm anyway. I managed to get this off an auction site and it's an incomplete kit. But what I can do then is actually use one to control the other. Because remember, these servers actually are fairly safe for back driving and I can read their position. So I'm using this second one here as a controller, if you like, to control the other X-arm. Control at joint level works well, but it isn't very natural. Certainly from the command line, I found it very difficult to think what the angle I wanted to get the gripper in should be, and you know, all of those angles to get a good video shot. That was actually one of the reasons I used the second X arm for mirroring. That worked really quite nicely, though I must admit in my setup, there's a little bit of a delay at the moment. Um, to control the robot naturally, we need to command it yeah, to move to a point and orientation in 3D space. That needs me to think about forward and inverse kinematics. That can be, can be quite mass heavy, especially for a six degrees of freedom arm. If this video or any of my videos helps you out, why not buy me a virtual coffee or lunch to say thank you? There's now a super thanks feature on my channel. Just click the button below the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button and please subscribe for more videos on my channel. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.